Hi, welcome to Monroe Live. I'm Paul Turnbull, the lead engineer for electric machines and electric motors at uh, Monroe and Associates. Today we're going to talk about the Cybertruck and its 48 volt architecture. Uh, I wanted to bust a myth about uh, the, how simple it is to go to 48 volts and how everything just becomes more efficient. Um, but uh, then get on to why uh, Cybertruck and Tesla decided to go to 48 volts and why it's such a great thing for their system. So before we get into that, let's talk about this myth about 48 volts and um, moving to higher voltage to improve efficiency. Um, in general, it's not as simple as that. So let's look at it, uh, just one example. Um, this motor is the power window motor from the Cybertruck. And it's a perfectly good power window motor. It operates at 48 volts. This is almost the exact same window motor made by the same company. Uh, this one's from happens to be from the Rivian, uh, but you probably have four of these in your car as well. Uh, Broza makes these by the million. Um, so when uh, the Cybertruck moved to 48 volts, they needed a power window motor to do pretty much the same job as this, but they are now have this 48 volt architecture. So they had to make some changes inside the motor to make it work at 48 volts. And let's see if those changes um, result in higher efficiency. And so in order to do that, I really have to do a little bit of math. And I'm on Roll Live, we usually avoid math, but I promise you this is nothing more than simple accounting uh, and there's be no differential equations here. Um, we look at the small motors and I look at the first law of thermodynamics, which is just accounting for the power in minus the power out has to be equal to the losses. It's just the uh, energy balance for the system. So the power in to the motor at 12 volts, we have volts times amps. For some reason we use the letter I for amps. I've never known why, but uh, I'm kind of curious if anyone knows, please uh, put it in the comments. But uh, so volts times amps equals the power in. The torque times the revolution speed, the RPM, is equal to the power out. And the difference is the losses. And most of the losses are um, heat in the windings. So this is the current squared times the resistance of the windings. And then there's other losses that are going to be the same whether you change from, you go from 12 volts or 48 volts. So the mechanical losses in the system. So now we're going to change to 48 volts. So we have four times the voltage. That's great. One quarter the current to give the same power because we still need the same power. We got to raise the window up at same speed. All that, so the torque has to be the same. The rotational speed of the motor is the same. So the power out is the same. So this is great. We get one quarter of the current and when I look at the losses for the motor, one quarter of the current, the losses, the, the current gets squared in this loss relationship. This, by the way, is Joule's law, uh, named for a guy that uh, discovered it a long time ago. Uh, so one quarter times squared, that gives you one sixteenth of this term dr drops to one sixteenth. So that looks real good. Maybe the motor is much, much more efficient. Maybe the losses are much lower. These losses, the mechanical losses, didn't change. But the, the key here is we need the torque to be the same. And we need the power out to be the same. And now that we have one quarter of the current, in order to get the same torque, we have to put four times the number of turns in the motor. So four times the number of turns means the wire has to be four times longer. 
that's a little bit of a problem because if I've taken one of these motors apart and you can see that there isn't a whole lot of room to put four times the number of turns on this motor. So if I put four times as much wire in here, it just won't fit. I'd have to make the motor bigger, which you don't want to do. So instead we go with one quarter of the cross section. We just make the wire thinner I put four times the number of turns. That's really not a big deal. It, it takes a little bit longer on the winding machine, but this is all automated. So it changes the cost of the motor by pennies. Um, but we do have this issue with now we have uh, the wire is four times longer with one quarter of the cross section, which means that the resistance of the winding per unit length has increased by a factor of four. So four times longer, four times more resistance means that the resistance of the winding has increased by a factor of 16. So we have one quarter squared for the current and 16 times the resistance. We end up with exactly the same loss in this small motor as we had in the beginning. So why did Tesla decide to go to 48 volts? Well, it clearly wasn't for improving the efficiency of the power window motor, which nobody really cares about anyway, because it's not going up and down continuously. No, the reason they do it is because they want to offer amazing new features to the customer. And so let's look at uh, some of these new features and the motors that are used to implement them. So we want to do steer by wire. So the, the Cybertruck has steer by wire. In order to do steer by wire, you need a tote. They're doing this with, uh, on all four wheels. And so with, since both front and rear are steerable, they need four of these large motors to uh, do the steer by wire. And these motors being much larger and pulling much more current, now at 48 volts, the current becomes much more manageable. So the motor itself becomes manageable, but also, and very critically, the control board that controls these motors has a significant advantage. When you reduce the current by a factor of four, these 12 switches, so these are uh, MOSFETs that are switches that control the motor. And so the switches that control the motor can be one quarter the size. And that means one quarter the price. And these guys are costly. So you save more money on, this, on these 12 switches than the entire cost of all four power window motors, all on this motor. And there's four of these motors in the Cybertruck. So that's where the cost save is for 48 volts for this system, um, but it goes on from there. They also wanted to offer other features like the air suspension. They wanted to move quickly. Um, and so this air suspension pump um, is driven at 48 volts. And it just goes on and on from there that the um, 48 volt system, it's not that it creates um, tremendously, uh, tremendous efficiencies within the small motors. It's more that it allows them to offer new features at higher powers that are not available on other vehicles. And so the 48 volt architecture was a, a tremendous enabler for Tesla to be able to offer these amazing features. It's not as simple as just change the voltage, cut the current and everything gets more efficient. Um, in order to really understand you have to dive into the engineering details of the entire system. And so it's really a lot more than we are able to cover in a simple YouTube video. If you really want to know the details of why the 48 volt system makes sense for the Cybertruck, you really need to get our report on that. And so really it's a plug for our report. Uh, and thanks for uh, listening and be sure to uh, visit Monroe and Associates uh, for your copy of the Cybertruck reports.